Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I'm going to be covering the subject of cloth simulations in Blender, specifically cloth sewing in Blender. And you can see here is an example where I have put up these connection points here. And I'm going to go through the whole process of how to like make these patterns, place them into position and then kind of make them just um, like a lock together with a cloth simulation. And this one is quite simple and I'm going to be making this blend file available on my Patreon. And in that blend file, I'm also going to have some more advanced examples um, like this one here, for example, which is a whole bunch of different parts using the exact same principle I'm going to be teaching you today. And you can see with this one, um, it's yeah, it looks pretty awesome. And I'm going to be making these two examples available along with this model on my Patreon. But anyway, without wasting any more time, I'm going to take you through the whole process of how to do this. So get a character that you want to use and you can follow along. Okay, so once you have a character that you can work with, open it up in Blender and we're going to get started. So you can see here, this is the one I'm using and I will be making this one available on Patreon, like I said, with some example cloth simulations. And I'm going to get started by in my front orthographic view, going Shift A, go to the mesh options and simply adding in a plane. Now, what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode and with this geometry selected, I'm just going to hit RX90 and I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to tab out of edit mode, back into object mode, and I'm going to go G, Z, and we're going to move this plane. In this case, it's going to be a shirt. We're going to move it to the upper body here. So roughly just round about here. And then we're going to hit free to go to our right orthographic view. Tab into edit mode and then go G and go Y and move this forward to about here. Right, at the moment it doesn't look like much, but it will make more sense soon. We're then going to go hovering over here, go Control R or Command R, and you can see a little yellow line appearing. Double click, and we just added in a loop cut. We're then going to hit V to cut it, right click to let go, and then you can just select the vertice here on the left and just hit L. That'll select all of this loose geometry and hit X and just delete those faces. So now we have half of a sheet here, and we're just going to go to our modifiers tab here. And as always, we like to work. Um, in a way that saves us time. So let's use a mirror modifier. Be sure to enable clipping, that's really important. And then we're gonna hit Z and go into wireframe view. That's gonna make things easier for us. So the way I like to get started to make things really simple is to model a low poly at first and then progressively move to a higher poly count. So I'm gonna grab this bottom vertice here and I'm gonna go G and then move it to here. Grab this guy here and bring it this, to this point and then grab the one at the top here and bring it here. I'm then going to hold in shift and select this one as well. So both of these vertices are selected and I'm going to go E to extrude and bring it in just to under where the armpits are here. And then I'm going to just rotate it a little bit, just like this. And then I want to come over here, just hovering over here, go control R, double click. I'm just adding in a loop cut over here. And then I'm going to grab this vertice here and go G and just move it over here. just just before the armpit starts over here. And then I'll hold in shift, I'm gonna select this vertice over here. Got them both selected, I'm gonna go E to extrude and extrude it up to here. And then R to R to rotate these two vertices in like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, hovering just over here, go control R, you can see a yellow line appearing, double click, add in another loop, and then I'm gonna select this vertice here, go G, and move it in here like this. Holding and shift, select both of them, and then go E to extrude, and we extrude this guy up like this. And at the moment, that looks really crude and primitive, but this is where it's going to start getting better. So what we're going to do is just select these two vertices and just double G, just to slide them up a bit. These ones as well. We're just trying to space things out and make it as square as possible. I'm also going to hover over here, Control R, double click, just add in another loop. Same thing over here, and the same thing over here, Control R, just double click. Now that they're all roughly squares, I might come over here, control R, double click, just add in two more here and just move them down. Just so they look like squares, roughly. Then you're gonna hit A to select all of them, double um, right click and go subdivide. And then what we're gonna do is come over here to the smooth tool and just smooth that out. And then what we're gonna do is go to this um, proportional fall off tool here, just click on it click on this corner vertice over here and go G. And if you roll your middle mouse button, you can in decrease or increase the fall off amount. And we're just gonna bring this in to round that out a little bit. And just spacing them out like this. So now we have something that looks like this. We can now disable proportional editing. And we're gonna hit A one more time, right click, and then subdivide once more. 
And with that smooth tool, we're just gonna once again, just give it one more little smooth. Nothing too crazy. Now we can do is just um, shift alt and select this bottom row of vertices and go S, Z and scale them down on a Z a little bit just to flatten them out. And in fact, I might just um, tap out of edit mode and just go S and scale this up just a little bit more, then go control A and apply scale. All right. So we don't want this to be too short down here. So we don't want this shirt to be too high. Um, it needs to be a little bit bigger than it looks it should be because um, it's going to kind of wrap around the character. It'll make sense in a little while as you see, but this is the basic kind of template for a good sport shirt I've found and works really good for me. But what we need to do now is we need to um, kind of duplicate this guy and move it back. So we're going to, um, an easy way to do that is just hit A to select all of this geometry and then to go E and extrude it back and extrude it just to the back here. And we want to move it enough so it's not, we don't have any of this geometry at the back of our character sticking out, just something like this. And then we're going to go to our face selection op option here. And then we're going to hit the C key, um, key on our keyboard and just going to select these faces over here. So the ones in here like that. We're going to hit X and delete faces. And then we're going to hit the C tool again and just C select these faces in the arm. Go X and delete those faces. And then at the bottom as well, we want to hit C, just C select these bottom faces and hit X and delete faces. So now we're only left with these faces here. We then want to go Shift Alt and click on here to loop select these faces. Shift Alt, click on here, that's going to loop select those faces. We then want to go to our modifiers tab here, click on it, come up to the vertex group, hit plus, and then we want to go assign and we're going to call this group Sew or Sewing. Um, you would think it would be spelled with an O, wouldn't you? But anyway, just type in so. And now if we just go to ver vertex select option here, des deselect everything and we click on this group here and we go select, we should see that these vertices here are all selected. While they're all still selected, these faces as well, we're just going to go X and just delete only faces. And now if we click on select again, we should still see all of these vertices are selected. But now there are only edges here, we're not seeing faces, that's what we want. So we're pretty much now ready to get into the next stage. So we're going to tab out of edit mode. And just for the record, you could apply this mirror modifier if you wanted to, but it is not necessary as it'll still work in our modifier stack as long as our cloth modifier um, goes on top or our cloth simulation goes on top of our mirror modifier, which it will automatically. Um, so I can see here for some reason, I've selected these faces at the back here and deleted them. So that's just my mistake. I'm just going to quickly just fix that. Yeah, that was weird. I don't know how I selected those and deleted them, but anyway, I fixed that. So like I was saying, so you can keep the mirror modifier. Um, what we're going to do now is with this um, guy selected here, we're going to go to our cloth settings. So just click on the physics tab here and then we're going to give this guy a cloth um, simulation here. And we're going to come here to the quality steps. I'm going to bump mine up to eight for now. And what we need to do that's going to be really important is we want to come down to the shape over here. So click on the shape and come down and we're going to enable sewing over here. And we're going to talk about these settings in a little while, but for now we're just going to set the max sewing force to 12 and the shrink factor we're going to set to 0.01 just for now. I'm not going to mess around with it till a little bit. And I'm going to also come down to the collision. We're going to make sure to enable self collision and we're going to bump the quality steps under the collision up to seven. And that should be okay for now, just to, sh to get things started. But what we also need to do is just select the object that our cloth is going to be wrapping around. So in this case, it's our character. And under our physics settings here, you just want to give it a collision. Come down here to the sewing um, soft body and cloth. And we want to set the thickness outer to 0 0.001 and hit enter. Or just 0 0.01 and the bottom one, the inner, to 0 0.01 as well. Now this is essentially just going to be the distances between the cloth and our um, character here, the surface. So we don't have too much of a gap. We don't want the cloth to look like it's hovering over our character. We want it to be nice and snug. So once we've done that, what we're going to do is just hit the space bar. We're in frame one and that simulation should run. You can see here the cloth has sewed together quite nicely in this case. And we can also just give this guy a shade smooth. So I'm just going to enable shade smooth on this. 
And you can see over here, this is looking really, really nice. And it's just, it's just, it's just a really easy way of sewing stuff in Blender. And what we can also do, is with this guy selected, is we can go to our modifier tab, and on top of the cloth, we can add a subdivision surface modifier. And then on top of that, we can also add a solidify modifier. And we can come here to the solidify modifier and we can decrease or increase the thickness. So I'm gonna bring mine down in the negatives a little bit, just like that. And you can see here we have a shirt. And I'm gonna show you how we can also cache um, these simulations. So let's grab the shirt here and just, just go back into our physics settings. And under the cloth, I'm gonna come down to the cache here. Just open that up. And we don't want this to be caching out the full 250 frames. So I'm gonna set the end frame value here for, for now to 25. And I'm also gonna come here to my end frame value on the timeline and just make it 25 as well. And then I'm just gonna hit bake. And that's essentially just gonna bake this simulation here. So it's um, baked into our blend file. So if we now play it here, we can see is our cloth simulation. And in fact, you can also give this a color. I like to just give it like a, just a nice viewport color, make it maybe a little bit darker than the character, and then add another material, go new, and make this one kind of red in the viewport. Just tab into edit mode. So I'm gonna just make all of these back vertices here. I'm gonna give them that second material. And I just like the way that looks. Maybe bring the roughness up on that a bit. I just like viewport color sometimes when I'm working. So just something like that. That looks really good. And um, you guys can use this technique for all sorts of things. In fact, I'll quickly show you the one I'm gonna be giving on away on Patreon. So that's this one over here. And you guys can see this is a bit more advanced. I've added some different parts here. And I've also got another more advanced example here. And you guys can check this out if you're on Patreon. I'm making these available. So here you can see I've done the exact same thing, but I've just added a whole bunch of different parts together using the exact same kind of technique. And I've got the sewing group here. And um, yeah, this one is a bit more advanced, but this shows what you can do with cloth sewing in Blender. And you can, I didn't even set the quality settings that high for this one. Like you could go in and mess around with things here to make it a little bit better. But I think this is just really, really cool. And it's quite satisfying to watch. Um, so that is cloth sewing in Blender. This is Blender 2.83. And like I said, this will be available on my Patreon, these examples, and you guys can check them out. And it's gonna include this um, upper body figure here, this um, mannequin that you guys can use. I'll see you guys later and um, stay safe. And thanks for watching.